Hey everyone, this is Martin from howtomakemobilegames.com on August the 4th, 2019. This is going to be a quick video just to update you on what I've been doing this past few weeks since uh, since the last video, because uh, I've been talking about uh, BCI, brain computer interfacing, and uh, biofeedback with things like the heart sensor. I think I've, I've done a video on that one. And recently I got this device, which is the Mindwave Mobile 2 from Neurosky. And what this is, this is a single electrode on the brain which is designed to um, read brain waves, so like alpha waves, beta, um, uh, and raw EEG. It's an electroencephalograph, I believe that's called, or an electroencephalogram. Uh, it's one of those things, like if, I might have mentioned it in the last video as well, is where you see people in a hospital and they're trying to read the brain waves and they've got this like cap on with loads and loads of wires coming off it and little balls all over it. That's basically this, but this is just a single one. This is like a home version. Uh, this cost me £145, but the reason why I'm, I wanted to get it is because I want to get into the area of biofeedback and meditation uh, and being able to sort of track your, uh, your mood and then be able to give some kind of a, a, a feedback to the user or some kind of record history of what's going on in their head in order to help them. So for example, in my case, when I do meditation, I wanna be able to see if my mind is wandering. I also wanna be able to find out if meditation is having any kind of long-term impact outside of the meditation session. And, and I think this is possibly a way to do it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, uh, but it's definitely an area that I'm interested in. And, and it's also from a business perspective is the reason is because as I, as I, I think um, uh, on one of the videos I saw from a friend of mine on uh, the, I think it's called the Overpass, um, I think Eric, uh, he recently had his uh, one of his apps canceled by Google Play. And so he, he had uploaded an app on Google Play. It's been on there for years doing very good money. And recently Google had sent him a cancellation notice or, or, or a pull down notice saying, hey, you, your app's been suspended. And that's the end of you know the business. Well, it's not the end of his business, but what I mean is that can be the end of so many businesses. You know, when when Google or Apple just just you put something on the store and they are the gatekeepers. I've said it a hundred times. Um, it's a very risky business. In this way, what I'm trying to do is get in, into the hardware software indus industry, or I don't know if you want to call it that, but building tech around hardware and software, and having an end-to-end -end solution for a user which does not require any kind of store or anything in the middle. So using things like Arduino, uh, stuff like this with the headset, even though this is not my tech, this headset, um, but moving in that direction, if that makes sense, and not going through an app store because that model is is just way too risky and, and um, it's too difficult, it's too saturated. So that this is the area that I'm getting into. So just give you a quick demo here. Hopefully this works. Um, I had a little bit of trouble getting this up and running in Unity and this might be a bit of feedback for the guys at Neurosky or, any, or some of the people that might be um, might be wanting to use this tech as well in some way. Uh, this hopefully will give you some kind of um, uh, some kind of help because I had trouble with this right now. And you can see right now there's supposed to be a, a squiggly uh, a green line in there, but it's not working. And this is a problem with this headset. Connectivity is a problem. Really, I, I, that's the worst thing about this. Um, there's good things, bad things, but this is the worst thing so far is the connectivity. Um, what I have to do every single time, or most times, is if I've left it alone for a couple of minutes as I was just setting up this video, is I've had to turn it off and then turn it on. So if I turn it off on the, on the left of the ear here, um, this is just a, this is a ground and uh, a differential signal indicator as well that's on the ear. It's not a heartbeat sensor. But I've got to turn it off on the back of the ear. I will close the NeuroSky uh, or the uh, ThinkGear connector, which is the connector to this headset, which runs in the background on my Mac. I'll turn it back on again. I keep on getting this error every single time. RFCOM serial channel failure. Uh, let's see, let's see. So if I open the Bluetooth preferences, Mindwave Mobile, let's connect again. And this is the biggest, biggest problem with this thing is, is the constant connection issues. The second thing is the power. That is a big problem, okay? This is this is the other thing with this thing is it's not a consumer headset. It's not like I could, somebody who's just a meditator who isn't a techie and a developer like I am, was to just grab it and then suddenly start to meditate with it for like and try and track their history. It's not for that. You can get some software for that on the Neurosky store. I've not used it personally, but the fact that I can't connect very well on my Mac, I can't connect on my Android, 
and the battery inside is a non-rechargeable battery that can only last for one hour, that's a big problem. That's a very big problem. It's not it's a design flaw. They should have had a separate power cable that you can just plug into a, into a socket or, or USB or something like that in order to fix this. And I'm going to have to solder my own little uh, wires in here because when the power is not strong enough, it doesn't connect. It, um, the battery, this one, like here, an, an Energizer AAA battery, you can see that. This ran out, well, it's only been like maybe 45 minutes or something, but even when the power gets low, it doesn't connect. I just put a new one in and it connected uh, no problem but I'm still going through this connection problem here right now so it says connected but it's gonna say disconnected in a second that's fine uh, let me just turn on the Thinkgear software the connector thing which runs in the background and then let's click play again let's see because apparently when the battery is a little bit low this thing the, the, the it just doesn't have enough juice to connect or something like that I don't know what it is exactly so I've just put a new one in and it worked a minute ago but it doesn't seem to be working now. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It's really hit or miss and it's the most frustrating thing because all I'm trying to do is get the signal from the headset, from this electrode here. And it was literally working just two minutes before I started this video. And there you go, another failure again. So I'll, I'll give it a try a couple of times, guys, because I do want to show you what's going on here. And this is just for sort of record keeping as well. And maybe to get some feedback and maybe to give some opinions on this to any other developers out there. Uh, if I exit this again, I'll turn it on again. Oh, okay. I will then retry to connect the through the Bluetooth preferences. I don't know if the same problem occurs on Windows or on different iPhones. I did connect for a moment on my iPhone, which is a, an iPhone 5S. I could not connect on my Android, which is a newer Android. It's, it's not a very good Android, it's a cheap one. Could not connect again. So this is a very like very dev kit kind of thing it's really not for a consumer out there at least that's the way i see it um okay so i've just connected uh let me start think gear again the connector again it started okay uh, may maybe some of you guys out there who are watching this might have some better better input for me on how to get this working i'm using a, a macbook this is an old macbook 2012 um running uh, iOS, uh, sorry, OS X like 10.11, I think it's Yosemite or something like that. I'm not sure. I think it, see, it failed to connect again, even though we had a little connected signal before. This is a Bluetooth um, uh, low energy, uh, I don't know what you call it, a port or a transmitter, but has it connected? I, I see I've got a little green sort of icon up here. It's hard to see because I've, I've, um, I've changed the resolution. But it, it, it's constantly doing this. If I turn this off, and let's just try it again. No headset was found here. This is really, really rough tech. I mean, the fact that maybe, oh, maybe it was my Mac, but I can't connect on my Android. Okay, there we go. It, now the data is coming through. How weird is that? It, 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 I can see that on the bottom right on the console here, guys. Uh, it's really, really... A big problem a big big problem uh, it's awesome that I'm starting to get the data through and I would like to, to continue to work more on the application side of uh, of just getting you know a, a sort of harvesting the data and then recording it and then being able to analyze and upload it to a site but the first thing I've got to crack is just this connection I don't know if it's a power issue I don't know if it's because there's just too much juice being taken from the battery when you turn it on that it just can't do it so what I'm going to have to do is just wire, take this battery out here uh, and then wire two connectors in there, uh, uh, like solder them, and then plug that into some kind of power source, maybe a USB thing. I'm going to have to look up a tutorial on this. Hey, but maybe there's a room for um, a, a new product out there that I, that I can work on since I'm working more towards the hardware uh, area of biofeedback. Uh, but this, it's really, uh, I mean, it's literally taking me like, you know, I've been messing around 20 minutes, 30, it was like an hour or something, just trying to figure out what was going on, maybe my settings were wrong, but the fact that it connects now, but didn't before, and I've not changed anything, suggests that it's something not to do with my Mac or the ThinkGear connector application. Maybe it's just the, the hardware and, and it could be the battery life, just sometimes it just sucks too much juice when you turn on the Bluetooth that it, it's unable to connect. So I'm going to have to, like I say, crack this open. Well, I'll just take out the battery, I'll just take the panel off and I'll just solder two wires and figure out somehow
how to get a AAA signal into there without busting it up, you know, because this was £145, I don't want to break it. Uh, I'm going to have to do some tutorials on that. I don't know if I can, say, plug in like a 3.3 volt thing and it will break. I don't know because these these small energizer batteries here, these AAA are only 1.5 volts, I think. Um, uh, yeah, 1.5 volts. So I don't know if, if, if I, how to do that. I'm going to have to look it up and figure it out and how to crank up the voltage slightly if necessary and see if that solves the problem. Because if that solves the problem, then that's a constant... Uh, 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 constant stream of um, uh, 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 of stable connection like like you've seen now then great it, when I leave it running it's fine I can leave this running now for like well I, before I mean the other day I ran it off maybe left it running for like 15 minutes or so it seems like that initial power up and connection is where the problem is uh, and it's just hit or miss as to whether it's going to work or not which does sound like it's a a power thing, a power problem, like there's just not enough juice in it at that particular moment when it's trying to connect and it just about makes it sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Ugh, it's a real pain in the ass. So the problems with this so far guys, and this is maybe for the for the NeuroSky team as well if they're listening to this, is one, connectivity is, is terrible. It's a real problem. Um, I can't connect on my Android and connecting on this Mac is a problem, but it's not like the Mac is a problem because it's so intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So it can't be a case of I've just got the wrong old Mac or the wrong OS X. At least I don't think so. I could be wrong. Um, the the other thing is the the, uh, uh, the battery life, which is connected, which is uh, you know connected to the connector issue. The battery life, one hour. That is that's terrible, and it's not chargeable, and there's no external power. I would love it if there was an external power socket which might solve that connection problem, maybe. I'll find out, I'll report it in another video. Um, but yeah, the power, this 60 minutes is a real problem because I want to meditate. I meditate sometimes for an hour, like often I'll do half an hour or maybe one hour meditation and I want to track my brainwaves during that meditation session as well as when I'm not meditating so that I can compare the two. You know, I can, I can have an ongoing sort of track of, of records and see, oh, Whilst I'm working, then my brainwaves are sort of like this, you know, I can get an average. But when I'm meditating, they're sort of like that. Uh, I've been meditating for two months now. Ah, oh, when I'm not meditating, my brainwaves have changed. They seem to be more like this now, you know, and I can compare and contrast and then sort of get that feedback from my brain to say, uh, th that feedback about my brain and say, oh yeah, meditation is having an impact or doing IQ tests or listening to this type of music or whatever it may be, whatever I want to do with the data. Um, but once it comes through, it's pretty cool. I mean, this, this what you're seeing right now is just a line renderer and all it's showing is the meditation value that's coming through. Now, the meditation value is something that is calculated within the chipset inside of this headset. Um, and I don't know how that works exactly, but what you can do from this is you can, you can harvest the alpha wave, high and low. I don't know what high and low is. Uh, the beta, the theta, and the delta waves. Now, uh, those are the different... Uh, frequencies of brain waves that come off this I think it's the prefrontal cortex here uh, beta is associated with concentration and maybe sometimes stress uh, whereas more alpha waves are associated with relaxation delta and theta are more associated with sleep uh, I'm very I'm very beginner level knowledge when it comes to uh, when it comes to brain waves and, and uh, neuroscience so don't quote me on any of this guys I'm, I'm still very much uh, a student of this uh, but yeah, I mean, it's great to see the brainwaves going up and down. If I close it now, you can see roughly where I am on average. I'm about sort of 25, 50 as I'm talking. If I stop talking for a second, let's see. Right, okay, that was around the 75 mark. So there was like around 50 to 75 and you can kind of maybe tell as I'm talking now, it's dropping to down about 50 again. So that's interesting. I mean, that, that's interesting feedback. Um, how do I work with this? I'm not sure yet. With In terms of meditation, what I'm hoping to do is kind of like what the Muse headset does, is create an app where it gives me feedback on meditation and says, hey, you're not focusing on 
your breath or you're not focusing on your mantra right now uh, stop thinking about women and boobies and think more and focus on your breath you know and it gives you that auditory feedback to say hey calm down and, and it, it does that by looking at that graph level and saying if it goes below this amount for a certain amount of time then give the user some kind of feedback so as you can see now I'm talking again uh, and it's dropped back down so let's close my eyes for a second yeah, I'll do it again for about a minute and let's just see what happens but I won't meditate okay I'll, I'll just relax uh, well I won't relax I'll just I'll just close my eyes and but I'll keep on thinking about things Okay, I think that went up. I should have left a marker there, actually. I, I forgot. So I forgot. I've, I've included a little marker app. You see that? What well, app? But a, a little. It did go up. It did go up though. Um, up to there. So, I, I, yeah, a little marker line that I started to put in. So I started to work on this application. Um, but it did go up. So, okay. If I if I do another mark and, and and I'm talking right now, let's say we're around sort of like the 50, 60 mark. Um, if I actually meditate for a moment or, or try to calm or focus on my breath a minute let's see what happens so i'll leave a second marker in here just so i can track where it was up to and then i'll close my eyes for about a minute or so and i'll meditate and we'll see what happens anyway Okay. All right. So let's just leave the second marker in. I'm not going to drag this across. I'm just going to zoom in on the in the scene view here inside of Unity uh, and take a look. Yeah. I I hope you can see that on the left side, guys. There. But you can clearly see that it did go up. I'm going to have to do a little bit more. There's the first marker, guys, and there's the second marker. It's like looking at a, a stock market chart, isn't it? It's pretty interesting. I mean, that was up there for a while. So. But I mean, when we when I closed my eyes before, I think we also saw up here it, it, it was also pretty high. So I need more data. I need more data on this. I need to test it more. I need to get all of the data from this headset. I need to get the alpha, the beta, the gamma, uh, the delta, the theta, uh, the raw EEG as well, which is this number you can see coming through in here. Uh, the attention value is something that I think is also calculated by the chip itself and is something by NeuroSky themselves uh, as a sort of like. I don't know, a calculation of, of how much beta and alpha there is. I'm not sure. I've, I've got to look more into that. Uh, I've got to learn more about this at all. You can see the values here, guys, as well. The, the low alpha and the high alpha that's coming through. I, I hooked up to those events, uh, and they're coming through just fine. So it's really interesting. It's just, oh, the frustrating thing, connection, battery life. And the third thing, I, I didn't mention it just before, is this is a developer kit. It's not for the consumer. So if you're a meditator, don't do it just yet. Uh, maybe wait until like my application is finished and you can do it. And then, and then, uh, if I bring out some hardware eventually, maybe I obviously I'd recommend it. If, if, if I build something good, I'll definitely recommend it. But it's not like the Muse, from what I understand. It's not like you can just download the app and then suddenly start meditating. There are apps. There are apps out there on the iPhone Store um, and from the NeuroSky Store, but I've not tried them. Uh, but what I was expecting was that you can get an app with this and it'll suddenly record your brainwaves. There is the brainwave visualizer which is this this little app down here uh, but it doesn't record anything and it's completely I don't know what's going on with this thing. There's a bunch of squiggly lines and and it, it probably won't connect because Unity is connected to it right now and I don't want to disconnect it because well it'll probably I won't be able to connect it again. Um, oh it looks like this it's allowed. Uh, no is it allowing to or not? I don't know. Ooh, okay. 
It looks like it's allowing two connections. I thought you could only have one and same one client application, but in fact there's two. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But it's connected. So this is the Brainwave Visualizer from Neuros Guy as well, but I don't know what the hell is going on. It's interesting to see these squiggly lines. It looks pretty, but and I can see that I'm not dead because there's some information coming through. But it, it's so weird. Like, I mean, I'm not... I've got a lot of meditation right now and I'm talking, but let me just be quiet. Okay, yeah, I, I see, I'm not sure what that meant. I, I was looking at the meditation value there, guys, to see if it was going up or down. Um, that's why you need recording history and recording data and what I'm trying to build here is the is the ability to uh, uh, leave marker tags and so basically like these little red lines here you tag it and it says okay meditation boom stop it it's now stop meditating then being able to output that to a text file or a CSV file a comma separated value file so you can bring it into Excel or even have a website service where it says hey that this is this is all of your track data long term all I want to do is basically have this on my head and just record all the time, all the time, but just remembering to put some tags in there and saying, oh, now I'm meditating, oh, now I'm doing some work, oh, now I'm, I'm eating, or something like that. And I can record my brainwave history and, and start to see patterns. You know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's still in the works, but the first thing is I just need to get them all recorded right now, adding the tags, being able to export that or, or upload it somewhere and going from there and then being able to uh, analyze the data afterwards uh, but even before that it's just fixing this flipping connect connection issue um, so but this is pretty interesting that's what I'm doing right now guys uh, I'll do a quick part two in a second to talk about unity dev stuff because this is unity and anybody out there who's using the uh, the mindwave uh, mobile 2 this is this one the mindwave mobile 2 um, uh, trying to connect it to unity is a bit of a pain I had a lot of trouble with it but I've managed to do some fixes and, and get it working smooth at least on the Unity side, but not on the connection side. Um, that video, part two, guys, if you do want to watch that, it's going to be on the forum, howtomakemobilegames.com. It's in the pro section at the top. That is a subscription part, as a lot of you probably know an hour from watching these videos. It's $3 a month, uh, but all of my videos are on there. Uh, if you even just wanted to watch the one video, you can, you can subscribe once and then cancel it like five minutes later, and you'll still be able to access all the videos for a month. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that, guys, and I'll be back in a moment. But for those of you who are watching this free video on YouTube, I hope you find I hope you found this useful. Keep on this channel if you're interested in meditation uh, or biofeedback technology, because that's the direction that I'm going, and that's what I'm hoping to build some amazing products in, both hardware and software as well. Uh, but early days, early steps, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, guys, part two, coming back in a second, and I'll speak to you then. Bye.